So you're having some issues with your cat's behavior. You've come to the right place because in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to understand and change your cat's behavior. Well, welcome back, wonderful pet parent. Uh, in case you're new here, my name is Jessica. This is the Pet Parenting Reset. We talk about all things dog training, dog behavior, cat behavior, um, dog and cat nutrition and enrichment, all the things to make sure your pet is the happiest healthiest version of themselves. So this video, we are talking about understanding and changing your cat's behavior. So one thing that I want you to know off the top is there's two things. There's only two things we're going to be talking about when it comes to understanding and changing your cat's behavior. But really quickly, before we get into those two things, I do want to just bring up the fact that most of what we know societally um, about cats is really not all that accurate. It's all based on a lot of misunderstanding. And I think that is what spurs our confusion and frustration. And the reason why we find it so difficult to deal with and understand our feline companions. But if we take the time to learn and pay attention to our cats, it's really not all of that difficult. Our cats are incredible creatures. So the very first thing I wanna to talk to you about when it comes to understanding and changing your cat's behavior is that cats are very scent motivated. Like everything in their world revolves around scent. And this is just, how they are designed, how they are built. They smell things at, at like much greater rates than we do. We have like almost no olfactory receptors in comparison to both our canine and feline companions. But the difference in our canine and feline companions is that while scent is important to dogs, it is like paramount for our cats and in different ways because Cats use scent for comfort. They use scent to mark territory. They use scent to understand um, what may be going on with another cat. And so if we think about all the scents in our home, there's so much that could potentially be overwhelming our cat. We use scented laundry detergent. We use scented, we have air fresheners. We um, use scents in our dish liquid, we use scented candles and plug-ins and room sprays, um, all of that, which is really an assault on our cat's uh, sense of smell, but we also tend to use scented cat litter. Um, if you are having litter box issues with your cat, this is the number one thing that we do. We immediately find a better cat litter, one that is not scented because that can be very, very disruptive for our cats. So scent is very important to them. And if we think about all of the scents that we have in our house, we combine all of that together, what is this doing to our cat? It is really wreaking havoc on their system. Um, it's overwhelming them in some cases. And a lot of the scents that we use in our house are synthetic. They're not awesome. Um, they're chemical laden and that's not good for them, but let's get back to the more natural scents that our cats use. So cats themselves produce a scent and they tend to rub. If you've ever noticed your cat rubbing their cheek against a wall or an object, um, they also have scents that come out of their paw pads. So when they scratch on a scratching post, they are leaving their marking behind saying, this is my, um, this is my scratching post. So when cats interact with other cats, the, these scents are how they really communicate with one another more than any other way, uh, any other form of communication. One thing that I do really want to talk about since we are on the topic of scent is that we never want to impose one cat's scent on another cat. Um, when we are doing something that we call scent swapping, which is something we generally do when we are taking our time and introducing two new cats to the household, we can take an item 
and gently rub our cat with it and we can place that item in the other cat's area so they can choose to smell it and uh, figure out you know figure out all the smells and take their time and really get to understand the smells that are on that article of clothing or towel or whatever you have used and vice versa so we're going to do that for both of our cats one thing we never ever want to do is take one cat's scent and impose it on another cat so we don't want to take that item that towel or item of clothing and rub one cat down with it and then try to rub the other cat down with it that's a that's a no-no we do not want to do that um, what we can do however is take an article of clothing that we have recently worn and rub that on the new cat or even the existing cat in the household because this is what we call a familial scent so every animal every being in the household is going to share some scent and that is generally tied to you because you're their person so scent is very 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 important so if you're having behavioral issues with your cat scent in and around the house is something we definitely want to take a very good look at we want to remove scented candles plug-ins and air fresheners we want to opt for non-scented um, cleaners we want to change out the litter for non-scented litter um, I have a lot more to say about litter but I, I have definitely said that in other videos and if you are interested in me doing a, another video specifically on cat litter comment below and let me know about that um, so we can do an entire video just dedicated to cat litter I would love to do that for you um, but you got to let me know so post it in the comments and so scent is very important so this is something that we really want to address First and foremost, in a household, especially if you are having any sort of physical um, issues or behavioral issues with a cat. Now, the second part of this video in helping to change cat behavior, of course, when we address scents that are not appealing, that may be causing some harm to our cat, then that can potentially uh, make changes in your cat's behavior. But really the second part of this has to do with training. And I know what a lot of people are saying right now, they're hearing me talking about training and cats and they're like, you're out of your mind, Jessica, but guess what I'm not? Because cats need structure and routine just like our dogs do. Now there are some differences in training dogs and training cats. Actually, there are a couple of differences, but the basic understanding is the same. We want to use positive reinforcement. We want to create structure for our cats. And here is the key to training, whether you're dealing with a dog or a cat. We focus on those behaviors that our cat is already doing that we like, that we want them to keep doing, and we reinforce those behaviors. So if you are having issues with your cat scratching furniture, but they also scratch their cat, uh, cat scratching post, we want to reinforce when our cat uses that scratching post, we want to reinforce that with whatever your cat likes best. That may be food or treats. That may be petting. The one thing that I will say here, a big difference in training dogs and training cats is that with training dogs, if your dog absolutely loves to play, then we can use play as a reward. However, when we're training cats, we do not use play as a reward because cats are incredibly skilled hunters and we use play for something totally different. We don't wanna confuse the two. We don't wanna overlap the two. We use play for something completely different with our cats if you're curious of, as to what that is, I can do a whole other video on that. You're gonna have to let me know you wanna see another video on play and cats and why we don't use it for training, but here's the thing. Food, treats, petting. I have one cat who absolutely, hands down, it doesn't matter how long it has been since her last meal, she will always choose petting over food. So really understand what your cat prefers what their value system is and go with it reward the behavior reinforce the behavior you want to see in your cat so for instance my cat Romeo it's a long story we were having litter box issues I have reinforced his litter box usage 
So when he uses the litter box and he does good boy, because that's what we call it, I tell him he did good boy, he not only gets that praise, yay, Romeo, you did good boy, good boy, Romeo. He gets that praise, which he likes, by the way. He also, more often than not, because I'm slowly, slowly switching his rewards, he gets a special treat. And then a lot of times he also gets petting. So petting isn't his favorite. He likes it. He prefers food. So we've started with food. Now, I'm telling you, this has been a game changer for us. He uses the litter box more often than not. I mean, 99% of the time he's doing good boy in the litter box. And Training with cats works, but we really, really have to focus on what they're doing right and reinforcing that. Because when your cat, just like any other mammal, gets positive reinforcement, they are going to want more positive reinforcement. It's just how we're built. So they're gonna keep doing whatever it was that got them that positive reinforcement. So those are the two things. It's really only two things. We really have to take scent into account. This is something we have to hone in on with our cats. It is of the highest importance and reward the behaviors you want to see. That's really how we understand and change behaviors in our cats. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you have a cat, let me know about them in the comments below. I really wanna hear about it. Uh, also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, why not? It's free. Click that subscribe button down there and then click all notifications so that you get notified every time I post a new video. A um, Couple of other things, if you're not already following the podcast up in here somewhere. If you're not already following the podcast, why not? Go to whatever platform you prefer to get your podcast on, Apple, Google, Spotify, all the places. Search the Pet Parenting Reset. Give us a follow. Start listening. I hope you love it. Um, yeah, those are, those are the things. Check the links in the description below to find anything else you want about me, my other socials, um, Patreon, all the things. I hope to see you over there. With that, give your pet some extra love for me. Until next time, bye guys.